uh, so hello everybody or good night good evening good morning um so we wanted to touch ground with you because we you could think that we've been quite silent and that's right but we actually have been very busy with uh PMIP and CMIP and um, beyond CMIP plans, and we wanted to, to start discussing those with you. Uh, so we is uh, Chris and Christian, and uh, there was also Louis Sign involved, and all of you, and uh, there will be as a guest star, Betty, for another MIP coming up. So uh, yes, let's go to the next page, please. Right, so the goal, the goals of the webinar is to present the latest news on CMIP and IPCC deadlines. And uh, we would like to present you some the fast track experiment that we proposed for CMIP. In fact, we proposed one, but we got, got involved in another one and, and uh, we discussed this. And there's also other initiatives that have been launched such as Plyomip 3. This is a, an advert of a paper that just came out. And uh, Betty will talk to you about what if MIP. And uh, then we will uh, launch. So this is designed to be short so that we can uh, discuss. So we la launch a discussion on future PIMIP work, which scientific progress we want to deliver uh, in the next few years. What are the timelines for these? How do we organize this given uh, our present organization? Or do we have to change this? So this is a lot for one, one um, webinar, but we, we launched this. So this is this is uh, why we use the verb launch, right? So you might be aware that CMIP seven and the uh, seventh cycle of the IPCC are shaping up. Um, so CMIP has now a bureau, and uh, it's very efficient. So they have designed some. Um, uh, one aspect of this is that uh, that is written here: the CMIP panel and WGCM infrastructure panel continue to shape the future CMIP structure and delivery plans in close coordination with the CMIP task teams. And so these task teams, they are interesting to us. And um, so we sent you some of the, these news. Um, these teams are about uh, making uh, CMIP work in a way. So working on data access, citation, the data request, which is uh, very important to us, of course, the forcings, the benchmarking, documentation and a strategic ensemble design. Um, so this, the CMIP uh, project office also wants to have regular engagement with WCRP and the wider community. And we are uh, regularly um, uh, contacted for this feedback. So in this webinar, we can also discuss about this. Um, so the important thing is that um, CMIP uh, reflected on the burden of CMIP-6, the CMIP-6 exercise, and so the CMIP-6 panel has proposed a more continuous approach for model intercomparison, uh, along with a targeted fast track, and this is a keyword, fast track set of, of experiments designed to set priorities for the running simulations, for running of simulations to align with the needs of the IPCC 7th assessment cycle. So the fast track is designed as a lighter set of experiments compared to CMIP-6, but it doesn't prevent us, of course, for, from doing interesting experiments in uh, PMIP. So what are the what is the timeline for the for the fast track and for the IPCC? So the, the decisions are not completely firm, uh, but um, the scenario now, the favorite scenario now, is that the IPCC uh, synthesis report should be published in uh, 2029, which means that uh, the fast track runs, or the, the, the runs, uh, the, the um, CMIP 7 fast track runs, are to be run until January 27, so that we have time to analyze them and people have time to downscale them as well. Um, and uh, and everything uh, can be published between 27 and 29, which means if I go backwards, that the um, uh, the spin up of the experiments will be uh, during 2025 more or less, and uh, we have to fix already our model versions uh, at the end of 2024, 
for those groups who wish to take part in the fast track. Um, the fast track for, for us is a, is, is a set of reference experiments. So we can start from these to design uh, the, the next phase of PIME. Uh, yes, that's, that was the, <laughs> thank you, Krista. That was the timeline that I described uh, previously. Uh, the timeline is very tight, but we, we have to think in terms of what we deliver for, for fast track, but more, I think the, the most important is what we deliver afterwards and what we deliver in terms of science. So um, let's go to the next slide. Right, so there are many possibilities and there are strategic choices to make collectively about the messages we want to deliver for AR7. And now I think we are moving to the, the, uh, the experiments that was proposed as a result of the last uh, meeting that we had between uh, working group heads on uh, so the proposal for PIMI for the fast track. We were asked to have to um, to uh, think about the burden, uh, the CMIP6 burden. And so we proposed a short experiment, which is called leak abrupt. And maybe Christian was one of the designers and the, the representative for, of PMIP for this. Can uh, describe this if you want, Christian? Yes, hello. So you can hear me? <clears throat> yes. Yes. <clears throat> so actually, I think this was not only of us a decision, but if I remember right in the meeting in September, we had also some kind of out in the, in the wings meeting in September, we had also some kind of discussion and people were asked what they would vote for in a, in a CMIP core kind of uh, setup that PMIP should provide. And the majority, as far as I remember, said actually last in the glacial would be good. And we took this also to our heart and uh, tried to um, yeah make this happen. Um, and um, in principle, the proposal that we make for the fast track is to have a simulation that is identical to the LRG 127K from PMIP4, but to uh, keep the um, expenses under control, we propose this to be rather in such an abrupt um, simulation mode, namely uh, set up the simulation uh, like a spin-up uh, uh, directly at the beginning put all the four things uh, that we have, and these are identical to the ones for PMIP4, and then run the simulation for at least 100 years. And those who are uh, interested and, and think those are interesting results, they are, of course, invited to run these for longer and also then to compute, contribute more to PMIP. So this simulation maybe is also a bit of an advertisement to other groups who have not yet been involved in PMIP so much. Um, yeah, I talked already about the fact that we keep we try to keep it as identical as possible to the previous version. So if we have any updates to uh, boundary conditions like vegetation or so on, then I think this must go via some sensitivity study route, but the core abrupt LIG 127K simulation should then stay the same as in PMIP4. Um, yeah, I think I said everything, right? <clears throat> right. But, but... The main goal is to, to study the impact on the Arctic sea ice. We are well yeah. aware that we, we need uh, yes. more years probably to study other mechanisms. And that's why we would like most groups to continue, of course. <laughs> but the Arctic sea ice reacts very fast and should have reacted by uh, 100 years. So uh, that's a continuation of some work that we've done on the on the CMIP-6 experiments. So. Yeah. And, and and I think one of the reasons that we also discussed in September in in this round here uh, for for LIG 127K is that you would like to have something that gives you some kind of strong uh, forcing at high latitudes towards studying pole amplification and so on, but you still want to have a setup that is as simple as possible that you can actually convince uh, modeling groups to run that simulation within CMIP fast track. And then, yeah, there's not many. There are not many setups that 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 fulfill that criterion. And 127k is is, is that one. Yeah. And I was going to say, I'm, I can't quite see how to share it now, but I will send out an, a message on PMIP announce afterwards. Uh, we've there is a little description of this simulation and a justification of it that's available on the CMIP seven website. For the fast track, and I will share that round um, around PMIP announce so everybody can see what what this simulation is and why we're why it's been proposed. So 
on so what needs course, to... Yeah, thank you. So of course, PMIP is not all about the last integration, so we can go to the next slide. Uh, and in fact, we've been contacted by CFMIP, so CloudForcing MIP, uh, for collaborate, collaboration on cold climates. And of course, they didn't really quite want to have the whole LGM in. Uh, maybe, unfortunately, I don't know. But uh, the proposal was to go for ha for having in the uh, in the fast track an easy cold climate to to simulate, which is half CO two, half pre industrial CO two. It was a CMIP six experiments. I think we have some work to do beforehand to study our capacity to evaluate such an idealized simulation. But it's uh, probably an interesting. Um, also, an, it's, it is an interesting uh, proposal, I think. So I'm not sure about the status of this experiment in CMIP, but if people are interested in, in joining uh, an, an analysis or leading an analysis of this, that would be really interesting uh, for us. I think you can go to the next page. Yes. And meanwhile, going back to warm climates, uh, PMIP3 has been launched. Uh, earlier this year, and the um, uh, the paper is out uh, in the global and planetary change uh, with the experiment experimental design and science plan. Uh, the, there's a new organization for climate core simulations. There's a slight renaming of the EOI 400 experiment that was difficult to remind and remember, that's, that's for sure. So now it's called late Pliocene, uh, but it's the same as the previous experiment, EOI 400, that's, that was run for Pliocene 2. And there are, there are other uh, Pliocene experiments for the uh, early Pliocene, which is the same as late Pliocene, but with the Central American Seaway open. And there's been already a lot of work on this, um, but this will be, um, an update. Uh, there is an optional focus to study uh, the sensitivity to orbital forcing and optional late passing experiments with dynamic vegetation to quantify the climate vegetation feedbacks in the Pliocene. Uh, and uh, so we can go now to what if MIP, which also deals with these vegetation changes. And Betty, the floor is yours. Yeah, so that, um, what if MIP is a MIP that's been coordinated by the WCRP Safe Landing Climates um, Project. And the concept is that um, to look at the responses to tipping points. Uh, so to assume they happen because uh, there are a number of other projects that actually want to see if tipping points will happen and then the responses, but there's no assurance uh, that the CMIP-7 models as they're uh, currently set up will have these. So uh, we identified um, five experiments, actually six, but one of them is not going yet. And that is to look at uh, prescribing a tipping point for the boreal forest, both its northern expansion and its southern dieback, Sahel greening, uh, Amazon rainforest browning, uh, and, and in particular, the first two really link to the uh, leg and to the mid Holocene, actually to um, also Pliocene in some ways. So um, to run these experiments, the way they're currently being designed now is um, to have uh, actually a control experiment, which will be the CMIP-7 experiment, and then an intermediate or a moderate change and than a more extreme. So for example, the boreal forests, um, uh, there's uh, from previous uh, CMIP-6 simulations uh, suggest that it will expand northward at about two degrees global warming, while the southern dieback is more at four degrees warming. So uh, an additive effect. So these are proposed to be done at global warming levels using uh, one of the idealized experiments, either uh, emission-driven or uh, also concentration-driven. And then there's uh, two for the ice sheets, Greenland ice sheet and an Arctic ice sheet, same type of uh, protocols, a moderate retreat of the Greenland ice sheet or the West Antarctic ice sheet, and then a more extreme at 
global warming levels of respectively two and four degrees. So these especially, I think, uh, tie to the lig. We didn't put it here, but linked to the lig and the Pliocene. Uh, so we're working on these now. The, the, the two vegetation, uh, boreal forests and Sahel greening, and also the Amazon rainforest may be fast track. Uh, one of the challenges we're having, and Christian has been involved in these discussions, is uh, they're fairly straightforward to do if models prescribe vegetation. Uh, those that have dynamic, and I'm, we're still trying to determine uh, working with the CMIP IPO, uh, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to design them, but I know Christian and Alina at uh, GF Dell are thinking of those. Oh, and I should say all of these are designed again to be, uh, so they branch off a global warming level of two or four degrees and run for about 100 to 200 years. CMIP is really concerned about carbon footprint. And so uh, running a, a thousand years simulation, at least for the fast track, um, is uh, something they not, well, they may approve it, but we'll see. Uh, so they're really, can, and modeling groups I know at ours are really concerned about the load on our scientists and our software engineers. So uh, we need to, for the community MIPS though, that can be done. That's an uh, independent decision of each of the modeling groups, for example, for us, what we're gonna do. Um, but carbon footprint and just the, uh, um, how challenging it was to do the CMIP-6 with all the uh, very important MIPS uh, is one of the considerations. So yeah, I, if people have questions for this, either during this or just email me, but we're organizing some, we've already talked a bit with teams, but we're still working on adding additional people and in particular, um, reaching out to the other modeling groups. Thanks, Betty. I think we can come back to oh. questions afterwards, right? So um, so we wanted to, to reach out for opportunities for collaboration since PMIP is about this uh, and, uh, and think about you know, working collectively on specific questions so that we, can, we could deliver uh, special messages for AR7 from all of us, and in particular using the ensemble of PMIP simulations, past and future uh, PMIP simulations, in particular on multiple climates. For example, the work of uh, Sherwood et al. on equilibrium climate sensitivity was a, there was a good example of how PMIP simulations were, uh, were used, or paleoclimates were used, but there are many more, including some ongoing work on, on uh, different aspects. And um, the, uh, the current working group structure is roughly centered around experiments and not ex especially on topics. And, and this, is, this can be understood because we need first to do the experiments and then to uh, analyze them. But I think now it's, uh, it's the time to think about um, uh, groups um, that are discussing about the analysis, uh, such as, as the group that we have on past for future, for example, but on other topics. So it could be tipping points, it could be extremes, it could be pattern effects, um, lots of things that are talked about for the future or, or things that are uh, your uh, will uh, to, or yeah, your um, uh, ideas for studying the past. So we are looking for volunteers to lead and join the, these, uh, these efforts from, uh, from everybody. And I think we are coming close to the last slide so that we can give you the floor. Right, so Chris, maybe you want to say a word. Let's... Yeah, I guess I was just hoping to start a bit of discussion. I think there's uh, oh, one thing having looked at sort of the fast track and and how that times in with the with what's being proposed for the uh ar7 report i think there's clearly something that we want to 
focus about or or make advertise well that there is still new results that have come from analyses from the CMIP six and PMIP four simulations. Some of those simulations weren't even ready at the time of the AR six report. And so, you know, there are new simulations there. And I think we need to be aware as a community not to solely focus on the new uh, CMIP7 stuff. I think there's a worry, at least in my mind, that that there may be some, that the fast track may become a little bit of CMIP7 sort of in its totality. That's not the intention by any means. But timing wise, if if we don't get other major sort of simulations set up and run in time, then it might only be the fast track that uh has new uh the new models in it. So I think we need to spend some time thinking about precisely what we can learn from those fast track simulations and 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 because we haven't necessarily done many of these simulations before, I think we want to do a little bit of learning about that soon so that we're ready and we we know what to expect when the actual simulations come along. Obviously, these uh, there's a focus in the this coming IPCC or this coming CMIP7 about emission driven scenarios. And so that is folding in a lot of carbon cycle stuff. So we need to uh be aware of that uh, i'm still personally not sure quite whether there will be implications about how we need to design our protocols uh for sort of in effect is things about the pi control changing and so how do we are there going to be any issues about defining some of our experimental protocols i hope not but I haven't really sat down and looked at it. Uh, obviously, as with previous PMIP efforts, there's a whole bunch of new models and we can run the simulations with our new CMIP7 models and think about uh, benchmarking and, and what we get from those. That's clearly going to be something we're going to work on. But I, I guess I'm thinking I don't want it to be the only thing that, C that PMIP is trying to achieve, in part because I worry that with some of the timelines and some of the uh and some of the other effort that modeling groups are doing that 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 might be setting us up for problems and at least a lot of stress for people and so i guess i was just putting this up as a as a starting point for any discussions really one thing i think i'm looking for is some volunteers to say things uh and to and to lead you know, little mini initiatives or or tasks, and and I think what I'm, what I will stress is, I I guess we're presuming that we're all adult, grown up scientists and can do collaborations fine. This is things that will require a bit more coordination across the across PMIP as a whole, rather than just the, rather than just a single group writing a single paper. Uh, cool. So I think if I quiet now uh maybe and maybe i'll stop sharing for the moment uh and then we can open the floor so i mean does anybody have something they would like to suggest or any problems that that they foresee that we haven't spotted yet Um, can I ask a question? Certainly. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, so I uh, apologize. I, I lost a lot of this. There's a lot of catch up for me to do probably after this meeting. Um, but for the fast track experiment, um, and so what kind of, um, um, so, so for example, for the PlyMIP, there proposed, um, a set of experiments, um, but they're also like categorized by like, 
um, experiment more towards paleoclimate for understanding the paleoclimate purpose or paleoclimate for understanding future climate purpose. Um, so I was wondering, would, would you guys recommend that potentially for groups who don't plan to do all the experiments, uh, prioritize the paleoclimate for future climate experiments, for example? Um, is there, um, so the, I assume like fast track is for IPCC um, uh, for, uh, for the next day, um, 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 the AR7, right? Um, yeah, so there, there are a few. Um, so first of all, Plyomip is, has set their own agenda and that, so that's totally fine. And uh, mm -hmm. any group is uh, welcome to, to take part in Plyomip. And um, uh, and synthesize the results. In, I mean, it, this this has been done very nicely in the past years in different topics and, and so on and so forth. Um, I think it's still uh, um, the group dynamics on which simulations to choose is really a matter of uh, uh, convincing the other groups to, to, to join mm -hmm. such an effort. What would be interesting to connect with the other experiments of the fast track is that the groups with the models they use for Plyomip run also uh, some of the fast track experiments, i.e. Uh, the, the pre-industrial, of course, that's, that's mm -hmm. also for Plyomip. But the link would be interesting to make the connections with the, the, the rest of PMIP and some of the, uh, the future experiments to check for mm. the sensitivity. And so I think this is trying to get this uh, consistent ensemble with one model version, I think is maybe the, the target that we we should have. Oh, OK, makes sense. Yeah, I guess that would enable like cross timing the whole analysis yeah, so, and also yeah, so, like validation yeah. using multiple proxy yeah. records from different timing tools. The, the idea is to the fast track to be a kind of reference, and then we have all the others spanning from this model one. Mm -hmm. Christian. And uh, uh, oh, right. follow up, sorry, Christian. <laughs> um, so with those set of experiments, uh, um, let's see, um, would this set of experiments be the most useful to be aligned with the uh, models or the, the, the future experiment using the similar version of model? Um, I assume that would be the case, uh, but sometimes it can be really hard mm. uh, because I don't even know the model yet. Uh, let's say if we use a slightly older version of the model, I assume that would still be pretty useful. Uh, I don't know what people's thoughts are, especially in terms of sampling like climate sensitivity, for example, or uh, sampling like on matching proxy data, sampling like uh, model uncertainty space. Right. Yes, that's that's where I think that's where working collectively, checking on, for example, the climate sensitivities of the different models is really interesting. Whatever the version of the model, you know, I think it's it's important to have different models. And if you target the, to 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 examine the, the impact of climate sensitivity on the on the Pliocene results, then you should make sure mm -hmm. to have a, a right sample of models. Right. Yeah, so I guess we're not necessarily like pushing for the newest, greatest model, which may or may not uh, be I able to mm. produce a fast track experiment. <laughs> I think time-wise, it would be difficult if Plyomip is expecting their results by mm -hmm. March, March 25, 2025. Yeah, it is a bit early, but maybe that can be changed as well. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Alan is here. I mean, we can try. I just <laughs> don't know. Uh, make sure that uh, they will know more. Yeah. So, Chris, thank you. So, Christian and Lauren. Christian first. Me first. Go ahead. Me, me first. Okay. Yeah, I, I just wanted to actually get to the same point. So, I, I personally think it is very, very good if, if as many groups as possible uh, do as much as possible. So, Pliocene, um, quaternary climate, last glacial maximum, and so on. One thing that I think is particularly challenging, and you already mentioned that point, is um, the different timelines that different MIPS might have. Um, it doesn't matter so much for those simulations that are more or less independent completely from each other, but 
There are some simulations via which the whole MIPS are connected, for example, the pre-industrial control. So if BioMIP wants to have the results already end of March next year, and at the moment the forcing uh, for CMIP is still being um, discussed and not even yet fixed, then there is the slight possibility that maybe the pre-industrial control run in BioMIP might look different than in other MIPS, and then there will always be a kind of problem with, of comparing the models to each other. Maybe in practice it's not a big problem, but we have to we have to see what happens. Yeah. And and keep this this on 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 the agenda. This this thought. Laura. Hi. Hello. Yeah. So it's uh it's good to see you all, and it's super interesting to hear about the um, the two experiments, the abrupt lig and the half CO two. Um, and it seems to me that to get the most out of these in time. <laughs> as soon as possible, um, it'd be great to do the work with the older models, with the CMIP-6 or even before models. Um, do, you, do you think that's possible? Do you think groups will want to do that? that and, and is there a problem with the sort of the, the PI control or things that might change between CMIP-6 and CMIP-7? Hmm, that's right. I mean, some, I think there some preliminary work, at least for half CO2, because Lick, we have quite a lot. Maybe we could dig out the uh, spin-up that, that was obtained. Betty, I'm looking at Betty. I don't know if you have. <laughs> but uh, we could, maybe we could ask the groups. Um, uh, Louise, Louise actually did that. Louise Sime did that for uh, for the Metophis model to, 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 to have a figure to convince that, to be convinced that 100 years was enough. But we could go back to our own spin-ups and see. Yeah. Half CO2, I'm not aware of that many groups which uh, have run experiments. Uh, that the, there was, a, I think there was a tier two in CFMIP. But it would yeah. be quite easy to run with our own models for sure. Yeah. So if people yeah. are interested in this, I would be quite happy to run one one myself, actually. Yeah. If we if we have that as well as the four times CO2, for example, mm -hmm. and some PI control, <laughs> that would be very valuable. Mm -mm. Uh, I saw Betty. I saw Fanny, but Fanny lost. Yeah. Uh, no, but it's now Betty. <laughs> yeah, she changed her mind. Oh. Maybe she's going to come back. Um, um, yeah, the half CO2, I have been told that uh, some have run it for CF, but it's a challenging experiment. Um, I don't know which version of CSM it's being run with, but 100 years you just barely get a response. You know, the model changes from what I've heard. I think Jen Kay's running it with a version. She's at a thousand years now and it still hasn't stabilized. Um, so I think when you start from PI, so I think it's still very interesting, uh, but it could be a challenge. We, I had a discussion um, with, Gokan, many of you know him because his office is right across, whether we should have an LGM experiment in fast track. And we decided it was not very feasible because not, uh, not all modeling groups have a paleo group. So doing things like uh, the ice sheet and changing the geography might have might be difficult for them. But I still think the half CO2 is an interesting. I just think it, it will take some thought and you know what it actually um, provides. It's not going to provide an LGM um, climate uh -huh. sensitivity. We've decided it's not going to tell us if our model is too cold uh, for LGM, which we knew for CSM two happened. So yeah, another now, I tried to push actually to have LGM CO two rather than than half CO two. Um, which is less, uh, there's a less, I mean, it's 190 instead of 140. Um, yeah, we might have to work on this a little bit, or a big bit, actually. Fanny? Yes, LGM CO2 would be nice, actually. <laughs> uh, I just have an update on, on PMIP carbon. Uh, so, as you know, the, our workshop is in two weeks, so we will have more answers then <laughs> for Norbert still. 
uh, vague things, but I was analyzing the, the results to our survey uh, at the start of the week. And we have 29 answers, so I'm very grateful for the community inputs. And just so you know, if, if you're interested in, at some point, uh, in having a look at our answers, I, I can provide uh, figures or statistics or things like that uh, for PMIP Carbon. And uh, we will be able to give you an update after the workshop. And one thing that uh, me and uh, my colleagues are asking ourselves is uh, how to best coordinate our activities with PMIP. It's, for example, especially in terms of timeline. Because for, for example, at the workshop, we will ask modeling groups, what are their time constraints uh, to provide simulations and for things like that. Uh, but uh, we want to, we definitely want to maximize synergies with other working groups from PEMIP. And uh, it would be good to uh, to keep us updated also <laughs> for, for these specific timelines since we will not be related to a specific time period. But we might not do too much either. <laughs> so. All right, Betty. I was wondering if in the what what if MIP there was an ESM component in a way because when you put a when you change a forest or you um, or you remove a forest, in fact, uh, it's changing the, the carbon cycle a lot. So, is did you have yeah feedbacks for that? Yeah, I tried to keep my remarks short, but, um, and I sent, I think everyone uh, kind of the summary slides of where we are now, I had to send them as a PDF because uh, IPSL wouldn't accept the big PowerPoint. Um, but the, uh, the challenge is I, much of I, a fast track and CMIP 7 are emission driven now. So the uh, design that we have right now, but we have to work also on the concentration is uh, this idealized experiment. It could probably be what they call the flat 10, but it could be Colin Jones is promoting a different one where modeling groups add 10 gigatons of carbon per year, starting at the pre-industrial. Um, and um, I think at about a thousand times, they get to approximately uh, um, uh, 2x CO2, uh, similar to 1%. So the idea, but some groups will still do concentration driven. So our design though, right now is branch off the flat 10 at uh, two degrees global warming level and four degrees. It, from the, what I've seen where they've done that with CMIP six models, it actually works pretty well. Um, you do stabilize surface temperature at that global warming level versus when you do a 1% CO2 and you just branch off at two X and four X, the model uh, keeps warming. So the idea is to do off this idealized experiment, you get to a global warming level of two, you impose uh, a vegetation change or an ice sheet change and run it for a hundred years and look at the regional impacts. And the, the concept was one tipping, tip ESM, tip MIP, and that may not get to a tipping point. Um, but two, it lets models that don't have, for example, uh, an interactive West Antarctic ice sheet, and I think that'll be most of them, uh, to still run the experiment and look at the impacts of that change. Uh, so yeah, it's off the idealized right now. The design is the emission driven, but we have to think of the 1% uh, CO2. I queried Eleanor about modeling groups finding out who's doing what in terms of vegetation or emission versus concentration. Uh, I guess there's a data privacy thing. So she had to send out an email for me and say, please respond. So, uh, but maybe Christian and others, we can take, I know what we're gonna do with CSM. So we could kind of come up with our own modeling uh, type thing. But yeah, right now many, I know we're gonna do emission driven, uh, but I bet we do a, a, a few concentration idealized experiments too. Uh, I just add one more thing quickly here. Uh, part of the way I sold the Sahel greening um, 
And for future, if you look at IPCC, yet, uh, they expect uh, the mo most of the models agree uh, increases in precipitation, increases in soil moisture over the Sahel and Southern Sahara region. And they also have this Great Wall Green Initiative. I, I don't know if I said it just right. So there's an anthropogenic too. So, you know, what if MIP is considering both of those, but the way I sold it, is it's policy relevant? If you look at some of the experiments PMIP groups have done with the greening of the Sahara, it affects ENSO, it affects tropical cyclones. Uh, so it's, it's important for the future to consider if uh, the Sahara would be, uh, or Sahel will be greening. It's not clear our dynamic veg models can do that yet. So prescribing it is a, uh, a key input for uh, people to understand and it'll affect uh, regional impacts. So that's the way I sold the Green Sahara. I also did that for all the other what if experiments. Right. Allegra, you had some comments on this or other things? Oh, uh, yes, I have comments. <laughs> One is that I do think that including more of the Earth system components makes these much more relevant experiments. So like the, the what if MIP, um, I don't know. I think a lot of groups probably did the mid-Holocene vegetation spur experiment. So we, we kind of have an idea of like what will happen, but it would be a way more interesting experiment if we include the carbon cycle components because um, yeah, then you, then you start to see unanticipated effects because we can all, I think we all kind of have a picture in our minds. Like we, we do this like greening the Sahara, we kind of have a picture in our minds, like what, how the model's going to change, but putting in these other earth system components, I think makes it more relevant because then we can start to see how these compounding effects. Um, I also like to point out anyway, in the, in the, I guess North American set of models, like when you green the Sahara, you do brown the Amazon. So those two things seem to be connected across four models, but for whatever reason, we just didn't, uh, probably because like who, who, uh, who Francesco personally <laughs> emailed, didn't, didn't, uh, didn't get back or did, we didn't collaborate in time to, to put them in that set. Um, I do think for like doing the half, um, CO2 experiment, it doesn't seem that exciting to me. I mean, if, if we were to do that and we are want to be conscientious about the runs we do, wouldn't we want to get more like at single forcing? So like we could do LGM, like CO2 only, LGM, like the orbital stuff only, and then the topography, like we could do, think about like looking forward, here's step one of like that four piece uh, experiment. So it would be more applicable. Um, so I think that's super important. I'd also like, you know, Chris hinted at the very end when he was talking about all the other stuff that we kind of don't talk about, but we kind of probably do something with. So, you know, when I do my pre-industrial control, the atmospheric constituents are not the same as when I do my PMIP experiments because they have so much anthropogenic stuff in it, like the black carbons and the organic carbons, all, uh, all uh, the ozone, all those things, um, I have them re-derived in a non-anthropogenic space. And maybe other groups do this too, maybe you don't do this too. It would be kind of nice if we coordinated on it. Um, I was at a seminar yesterday and they were talking about like the direct rate of forcing for CO2 in the four times CO2 experiment is equivalent to when you turn on the ozone feedbacks, so though that direct rate of forcing, not the temperature part, just the direct rate of forcing. So that makes me think like, wow, I need, really need to start paying closer mind to like um, the other atmospheric constituents, which I don't generally, um, I just have a non-anthropogenic set I don't interact with. I think we could do a lot more with that. Um, I, I just think like these compounding con effects, like that's where like a lot of the uncertainties moving into the future are gonna be derived. And I also think that, you know, we can think, we, we traditionally just do mean climates, but maybe we should start thinking more about extreme climates. Like that's what like uh, kind of bothers me going into the future, like understanding more about not just base climate shifts, but how PDF shifts are happening. And so we can do experiments like forward thinking like this. Um, and then one other comment, which is that, so I don't know if we're going to, I mean, Mark Chandler's always done Pliocene at GIST, but Mark is getting a retirement age and he and I are negotiating whether or not I'll take that over, <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm doing Miocene. 
And I think if we, we want to still have like the CO2 analog experiments, like we may want to think about bringing myosin more into like the typical fold of PMIP stuff. Yes. Um, so so my oh, MIP yeah. is ongoing. Yeah. So I think. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I was thinking we could count on them. <laughs> I'm not sure uh, Natalie's here, yeah. but. Um, yes. uh, they have a paleogeography meeting early 7 a.m. Eastern time, but you guys oh, are, okay. you want to go to that meeting. <laughs> I, I will, I will be there, but not speaking. But it seems <laughs> to be very strong and, uh, and uh, very um, Oh yeah, for, for 100 years experiments. Um, so I, I've done like tons of coupled perturbed physics stuff with like all kinds of different stuff. 100 years is generally only enough for like mid Holocene, very base experiment. The other ones, a GIST model at least, when we tweak the heck out of our clouds codes, are not going to be enough. Not going to be enough for LGM, not going to be enough for two times CO2. Right. So, yeah. um, Do you think, uh, so you were talking about the, um, in fact, we are going to go with new models and uh, which are more uh, system models than uh, previously. So probably, so, um, we probably have to do a survey of what what people's yes. intentions are, and uh, I have the feeling from a few of you talking that uh, many people would go with ESNs now. Yes, so, I think, yeah, I think we want to do it, but it's like when I want to do an LGM experiment. Currently, I can kind of go rogue and do it by myself, but if I want to turn on the carbon cycle or if I want yeah, to see how ozone <laughs> changes. I, I cannot do that by myself. I actually have to pull on a, another GIST collaborator who may or may not be that interested in polio. But if I can do it, I think it's super important. And we, I, yes, if y'all can do it, it's super important. Yeah. Infinite That's time. Well. And all, also, GPUs and chat GPT, I just, my personal feeling is that any kind of simulations we're running, like some guy searching for like, you know, drawing like graphic figures and frontiers in is burning way more carbon juice than we are. So that's, that's all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Betty is back. Yeah. I, I didn't pay attention to the, to the chat, but I should be. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that, um, but because um, I know our carbon footprint, um, I wonder, and maybe uh, Chris knows more of this, but I wonder if some models even in the fast tracks might use their CMIP6 model. And I think that's probably okay, you know, a mixture of CMIP6 and CMIP7 uh, models, um, I think probably is probably okay. I, I don't know if that's true, but it, it seems to me we'll probably use CMIP7, but Maybe we'll try it with our CMIP six some of these first, and or we have already like the lig abrupt. Um, the one thing I think is really important, and I'm glad Christian had this in his slide is, um, it's great that the models will all run with their current uh, CMIP seven, but vegetation is really important for what's happening to sea ice. So uh, if we can do some additional sensitivity experiments. Uh, putting that in, I think it uh, maybe not with fast track, just with PMIP. I think it's it, it'd be critical. But I'm curious to see what the dynamic veg models will do uh, in the leg of rub too. I think that could be really interesting and informative. Yeah, I can chip in in response to your question, Betty. I know the UK are our model or our next model, UKSM two, is not going to be ready to be able to do fast track simulations. So we're going to be using some sort of interim models, not the straight up CMIP6, but uh, but it's not going to be full on UKSM2. And, uh, and, but with an intention that UKSM2 will do CMIP7, just the, the slower bits of it rather than uh, the fast track. So yeah, this discussions I still need to have within the community about quite in the UK about what models we're going to run, but yeah. So, right. Yeah, I so we have masses. to talk about models and timing. Yeah. Mm -mm. We don't have to do everything by 2028, of course. I mean, we should, we should keep uh, in good health. <laughs> That's the most important. Yeah. So, I guess we're 
sort of slowly approaching uh, our hour and uh, that I'd scheduled this meeting for. And I'm and I'm aware that people have stayed up or got up in particular time zones. So I don't want to I don't want to overrun. What I was going to say is just sort of moving forwards. So I've certainly taken some notes and will be and I'll send round a, a a sort of a summary of of what we've discussed a bit here and some thoughts uh, out on the Pima Pronounce. I'll there's an Easter vacation, so I'll take a few days off before I do that. Uh, but that will be coming round. Uh, I think we need a we need to canvas a bit of opinion about what models people might be wanting to do, and therefore what simulations they'd be interested in doing for the modeling groups. Uh, what I would like to do is I think for the fast track, these two new fast track simulations and, and possibly some other bits, I think we've got some preparatory work to do before we even get the simulations going. And so for this abrupt half CO2 run, uh, it would be really good if we could have some volunteers to form, I guess, a sort of a, a, a little working party who are going to see if they can dredge anything useful out of what information they've already got, uh, maybe running new simulations. But for the LIG one, it's more digging out data for the, from the spin-up and seeing what the timescales involved in the various different components of the spin-up were. And so we'll be asking for some volunteers. I haven't noticed people particularly stick their hands up here as being, I want to lead it. Uh, but hopefully we will we'll get some people doing that is there anything else you wanted to add massa yes so just i think just so that we are on the same line so there will be fast track roughly in 2026 uh and then after the fast track we we'll, we will have C7 proper and probably pin 5 or the the some some more work on PMIP. Of course, we can start the work on PMIP before, but uh, I think in the form that we're going to send out, we will check how you feel, uh, how the modeling groups feel about having these work uh, going along together or not, because uh, it's even uh, technically wise, it's not always always obvious to have all the runs running uh, at the same time, and we have. Also, this pre CMIP seven work that we have to do, and I think yeah. I would like to know how many people want to to be uh, um, uh, promising their their time and work in this specific uh, time uh, periods. So before twenty twenty five or six, then during fast track, but then we probably the most most of the groups will be um, busy with fast track. And after, and I think we have to think about this um, about how we get organized in these time zones. And so we will ask you about this if this makes sense. Um, and then there's also the work that we can do already with existing simulations. Uh, I know some some of the groups some groups are still working on the AMOC at the LGM, for example, and because uh, I've been asked some data and. Um, I think this uh, knowing what's going on is also a nice thing. We don't have to run new models all the time. We can use the uh, the previous ones. So um, knowing about what what your favorite topics are at the moment, and if you want to have coordinated experiments or not, is uh, is important. Brilliant. Uh, the final thing I'll add is for those of oh Fabrice. Chip in now before I say. Thank you. End the time. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I just I just wanted to add a, a very quick thing uh, to to have a, a bit of a longer perspective is that um, okay, so AR seven will finish in two thousand twenty nine, two thousand thirty, uh, and then AR eight will start, and we're going to have, to have another stock take in uh, two thousand thirty three. So it is very likely that. Um, I, we don't know yet what kind of format uh, AR8 will have. There's a lot of discussion about reforming the IPCC, but it's very likely there's, that there's going to be at least a special report, something that will be done for the Global Stock Tech 2033. So um, 
you know, when you talk about past to future climate sensitivity, these kind of things, it, it would actually be good to have these timelines in mind as well, further than just the fast, fast track and uh, global stock day 2028. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, yeah, the only thing I was going to, final thing I was going to say is that there is, uh, for those of you who are going to uh, the European Geophysical Union meeting in Vienna next week, there is a PMIP related session on Tuesday with uh, some orals and posters. And obviously there's PMIP bits scattered right the way through, but there's a particular one about modeling past climate uh, there. Is, have you got anything else you'd like to add, Nasa? Yes, so if you, there will also be a CIMIT booth where you can discuss with CIMIT project office. Uh, and especially if, if you're going, I'm not going this year, but if you're going, I think we would really like to advocate that PMIT is useful to them. <laughs> so, so please drop by with a, this message <laughs> um, if you are there. Uh, Chris, you also mentioned a CMIP, uh, so there will be a, a, a series of webinars, and that's another uh, place where we can make CMIP, uh, PMIP known to CMIP people mm. and try to attract new groups. Um, I think there was another thing that you wanted to say, Chris, actually. but uh... No, I think that's probably enough for me. But yeah, so, so I think getting getting to people to say what they'd like to do and um, would be really helpful uh defining yeah Beth, betty's saying de defining some of the simulations i guess i'm hoping that the working groups are going for the for the particular experiments are going to get active fairly soon but we need to sort of set down a set out a bigger timeline for yes. that to make that oh. happen so what when we know about which models so i mean keeping the protocols as much as possible as last time is one thing now for the specific question of the lgn there, there are new ic reconstructions for example so uh, of course we could take those in and we have to discuss this and the matter of having new types of models and esms i've discussed uh, i mean fanny and i discussed uh, many times about the carbon and what it implies for um, the LGM uh, runs and other runs as well. I think we probably need to update a little bit the protocol. Um, and this could be the, the topic of further webinars, but we need to know which uh, model versions are going to be used in a way so that the protocols are useful to people. Um, and I think it's, it's rather easy in GMD just to have a version two of the protocol. So um, that would be that's a, that's that would be something that for us to take, and uh, further discussions maybe on specific experiments. This time. Brilliant. Okay, so I think I'll leave it there. I'm going to stop the recording, and. Uh...